Hydrogen is on everyone's radar, of course. It's an interesting topic, but really, it's nothing new. What is new, of course, is that today we are talking about green hydrogen. The production of green hydrogen requires electricity, which must come from renewable resources. We are thinking mainly of wind energy and solar energy, also worldwide. A relatively large number of sensors are installed in wind turbines, so we are dealing with a whole range of applications. And that has to be massively expanded. Then, of course, the question arises, how this energy becomes hydrogen, which is done via electrolysis. Electrolysis is production from water by means of electricity, where the H2O is split into hydrogen and oxygen. The electricity has to be transported. The hydrogen then must be transported from the electrolysis. There are various technologies by means of liquid liquefaction of hydrogen, but also via storage under pressure and transport under pressure. That is, we have pipeline systems. That's right. And when we're talking about pipelines, we inevitably come to the concept of gas pressure control and measuring systems. There's also a corresponding measurement technology involved. Pressure, temperature, and other things are measured and queried. And these signals are in a potentially explosive atmosphere which is always divided into zones. This building is, in any event, at least zone two, which means that on the one hand, the tightness must be given, the ventilation, when it comes to hydrogen. But of course, the electrical explosion protection is also important, and once it is transported, it will eventually reach the end user. And there are various sectors that already need hydrogen today and want to use it in the future. We're thinking of hydrogen filling stations, for example, something that is currently being set up. Above all, trucks, heavy-duty vehicles, which are mentioned here, but there are also other consumers in the chemical industry, in refineries. So, you have to say that the biggest CO2 generators are actually the industries. We have large industries in the chemical sector, but also steel, cement, glass industry. These are major energy consumers. Yes, ultimately you have to say that hydrogen has two functions. Firstly, it is either a raw material from which we can extract something just as we can extract something from iridium. Hydrogen extraction is primarily for the chemical industry. Or we can use it as an additional energy carrier and use it to replace coal, natural gas, fossil fuels, and that's where we're headed now. The chemical industry, as I said, already requires hydrogen and it is produced in appropriate quantities. But for this form of energy carrier, that's actually the point where it becomes active, to replace coal and natural gas and to produce thermal energy. We will at least be part of the solution throughout. We're not going to build hydrogen filling stations, but wherever sensor technology is needed for better control, where explosion protection is needed, where new interface technology is needed, where new ways of transporting signals from A to B are needed, that is where we will be present, and that is where we will offer solutions. Also in factory automation, because all of this has to be manufactured and produced. In this respect, we are confident that we will be represented in this growth market and that we can establish a good position as a solution provider.